here I have two capillary tubes in my hand as you can see them right and you can see that they are very very tiny uh, the smaller the radius the higher the water will rise in them so we'll be using these capillaries for our next part of the demo so let's see what happens I have a water sample here and I have used food coloring to give it some red color right so here I will pour some more Here we have the capillary and I am going to insert it. Let's see how far the water rises. Okay, okay, so we can see that the water has risen very quickly. The important part is, you see that now I have gotten it out and the water is still inside the capillary. Okay, it is not letting it go because the surface tension is able to balance the weight of the water which is inside the tube. Let's see what happens when I dip it all the way through. Okay. As I dip it, the water level rises such that the height of the water column from the surface of the water remains same. Okay, when I take it out, the water will go down. Yeah, you can see that, right? And when I again place it, it goes up. So what matters is this height. This height must be same from the water surface to the water column. Okay, then. Now let us suppose that I dip the capillary tube in a slanted position, okay, what happens? You can see that the water is again rising, right, and if I decrease the angle, yes, you can see that the water has almost reached my hand, tilted, the extra water will again come down, okay. And finally, you will get the same height that we were getting. Okay, this is a close-up shot. I want all of you to see the shape of the meniscus, okay? The water column and its surface. You can see that the surface of the water in, uh, in the capillary is curved. It is concave upwards, right? It is very very important for our next part. Two glass slides, okay. Now I'll be using these to rise the water, okay. I'm going to create a place between them like this. I'm going to place these two like this in water. You can see that there is a gap between the two. First of all, there is also an important point that I want to share with you. Check the shape of the water when I place this glass slide, okay, the water is rising, okay, it is kind of being attracted by the glass surface, okay, when I take it out, you don't see anything, but when I dip it, you see that there is a curvature on both the sides, right, on the surface of the water. Now, I have another glass slab here okay, you can see that the water is rising in between right that is same that was happening in the capillary tube the good thing about this demo is I can decrease the separation between the glass slab and as I decrease the separation water will rise even more okay see I'm decreasing the separation you, you can see this from angle that water has risen to a very good height okay this height is maybe equal to one centimeter this is the formula that we use to find out the height of the water column H okay and you can see that it is inversely proportional to R so if I shrink this radius water is going to rise even more H is going to increase right in this video we are going to see a very intuitive way to understand that why does the water rises in a capillary tube and it has to do with this shape of the curvature we have seen in the close-up shot that the water surface is not a plane surface it is a concave if you if you look from above it is concave upwards i have a balloon here and the balloon has one surface, this is a spherical surface and there is air on the outside as well as inside the balloon. Okay, can you guess 
which part of the surface of the balloon has more pressure of the air the answer is obvious the inside air is at a lot pressure okay uh, compared to the outside pressure because you can see that i can squeeze it right i have to apply some force to overcome that pressure which side of the surface of the balloon has higher pressure you can see that it is the concave part okay this second diagram here indicates a case in which the surface tension is there but the water is not rising in the capillary okay as you can see that the water inside the capillary is at the same level as the outside water okay if this had been the case what would have happened well this is the atmospheric pressure p0 and this the uh, what the pressure inside the water surface just inside the water surface would be p dash as this is the convex side p dash will be lesser than atmospheric pressure but we know that p dash level is same as this horizontal level they are at the same horizontal level right so p dash must be equal to p0 from the hydrostatic pressure law right that the pressure in a calm water or a any liquid is same at any horizontal level so p dash and p not and p dash must be equal but that cannot happen because we know that due to the curvature change the pressure is different on the two sides of the curvature p dash must be less than p0 now how does the nature accompany with this well nature has a solution it does not allow water to stay at the same level as the outside level it goes like this okay the pressure that has decreased p dash okay due to that decrement we have to compensate we have to compensate that decrement in the pressure and how does the nature compensate it well by increasing the height now this is the pressure p dash but this point which is at the same level as the outside is at height h below this point okay so if this is point p2 i can write p2 is equal to p dash plus density of water into acceleration due to gravity into h the hydrostatic pressure formula p2 is equal to p0 and this should happen from this formula i can say that p2 is at least greater than p dash okay so nature always has its way it takes care of all the phenomena that could happen and gives us the final result okay thank you all for watching the video you can subscribe the channel for more such physics based experimental videos thank you very much